Let me introduce you. This man is a member of the Gralsritter, a division of the Septian Church. He's the second in command, in fact. Thomas Lysander. He holds the seat of Second Dominion and is sometimes known by his title, the Partitioner. Gralsritter? An omnite organization that is run by the Church. I'd heard that female terrorist S was once among the ranks. W wait a minute! Guys, is this me? Wait, are you? Now allow me to introduce you. This man is one of the Gross Ritter's Twelve Dominion. The successor to the Eighth Dominion. Gaius Warzel. Eighth, okay. But why? Is this why we couldn't get a hold of you for the past six months? Yeah, a lot happened all at once. After graduating from Thoris, I returned to Nord, and began observing the struggle between Erebonia and Calvert. We did hear about a lot of, like, skirmishes that have been happening, right? I assume that includes Nord. However, I began to feel something dark and sinister carried on the winds of the plateaus. I consulted my father and the chief, and eventually my old teacher, Father Barkhorn, came to visit. You might remember the name. He was the traveling priest we chased after during the Civil War. But it turns out, he was also the Eighth Dominion of the Gralsritter, with the title The Roaring Lion. So you succeeded him? Okay. Did he... did he die? He was an extremely skilled knight, who investigated the Salt Pale in North Ambria and trained Brigadier General Bardius. Apparently, he was worried, and came to Nord to check up on me. He explained to me that what I had been sensing was called the Gale of Ruin. I'm not sure why I'm able to sense it. Maybe it's because I'm a descendant of those who fought alongside the Lionheart Emperor. I mentioned this to him and he came to a realization. But then it happened. A Calvardian ship that broke past the 7th Armored Division attacked my village. My father was away at the time. I fought back in an attempt to protect my family, but it was no use. Right as I prepared myself for death, my teacher threw his huge body in the way to protect me. And as he lay there dying, he passed his stigma onto me. You can pass it on? I thought you had to like... what? Across the nearly 1,000 year history of the Gralsritter, its highest ranking members have each borne one of 12 sacred markings. This was one of those markings. Huh. The Roaring Lion. Oh, I've heard that same I've heard that name many times. Say many people were affected by the disaster in North Ambria. Yes, among the current Dominion members, he was the most veteran. And after the stigma was passed to guys, I took him to the holy city of Octaria, where he received night training. Hence his half year of silence. I see. If that's what's happening, you should have told us. Yes, we could have helped you. It's okay. Everything happened so quickly. I did everything I had to do, and finished my night training. Last month, Eusus was finally able to reach me. The power that I've received from my master. With it, I will save the Empire, and my second home as a member of Class 7. Uh, Gaius? <laughs> Sheesh. How can stigmas be passed on? How does that work? You've always been so grand and reliable. Thank you, Gaius. Please, lend us your strength. Yes, I will give you my all. Hmm, seeing someone like him puts us under even more pressure. Yeah, the gap just isn't in an age or experience. The group certainly has become awfully formidable. Eh, not really. We're still training just as much as you guys. I have a ways to go before I reach my heights, or the heights of my predecessors. And speaking of which... You're the one who called us here in the first place, aren't you? She did say they. I only hid myself so as not to interrupt your discussion. Yeah. 
You're Emma's grandfather. Uh, mother, 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 mother. The elder of the witches, Roselia, was it? Indeed. But you may simply call me Rose. You have said that before. I had you all gather here for one reason. To explain to you the background between the Hexen clan and the church. Oh, please do. I love explanations. I see. So that's how it is. But aren't the witches opposed to the church? <laughs> it's not as though we don't believe in Adios. There have been some differences in opinion over the years, but we and the church have worked together on a number of occasions. For example, during the War of the Lions, or the Vampire Incident in the Middle Ages. Not to mention the fight against the Dark Dragon 800 years ago. But all that was just Rose sticking her nose into other people's business. Wait, what do you mean by that? Wait, so you were involved in all that? Oh, did, did everyone not realize she's like super old? Legend has it, Emperor Dreykel's camp was once visited by a good witch. And the novel Red Moon Rose features a vampire hunter affiliated with the church who was, in truth, the true ancestor of the vampires. The woman you now see before you was both of these people, even if she looks a bit different. How old are you exactly? Hmm, 800 or so. However, you should know that my situation is somewhat unique. All other witches are normal humans. Except, of course, for the fact that they are all descendants of those who once guarded the Septarian of Fire. Okay. Septarian of Fire. We're getting- we're actually getting info dumps on the Septarians now. Okay. It's same as the Oriole of the Barrel. And the Great Tree of Crossbell. Septarians. Seven gifts bestowed on humanity by Idios. It's said that they were all lost during the Great Collapse 1,200 years ago. They're the things our Boris has been trying to get their hands on all this time, right? Yeah. Now for the main topic. Now, where to begin? Grandmother, we don't know anything beyond this. Don't leave out any details. Make sure you explain it fully. I second the request. I do not know the details either. Let's see, Roselia. Perhaps we should take turns talking. Very well, that'll suffice. I'm sure you know this by now, but there's a front and back to this empire. The spirit veins are directly affected by the turbulence of the government and war. And that causes cryptids and powerful monsters from other planes to stir. That explains it then. As the empire's territory spreads, so will they. The Plural McGrath and the Magic Knights? Where did they come from in the first place? Once again, Plural McGrath is a monograss from the Higher Plains. It once served as the eyes and ears of the Septarian of Mirage. Normally it's blue, but after the incidents in Crossbell, it all vanished. That is, until after Crossbell became part of the Empire, at which point it began reappearing in this new Scarlet Shade. H how do they dis- How do they make this distinguish? How do they distinguish between being part of the Empire or not? The implications are rather chilling. It changed color to match the Infernal Castle, perhaps. There's undoubtedly a connection. As for the Magic Knights, you may have heard before, but they are golems from the Dark Ages. They are created by mages of the Empire to fight against the Divine Knights. During the Civil War, something caused them to stir once more, and they now appear in Crossbell via the Spirit Path. No way. So they're just somewhere out there, basically. They get woken up and they travel places via the Spirit Pass. That also explain the increased incidents with cryptids recently. What about the Society? The Phantasmal Blaze Plan. They sought to use Crossbell's false phantasm to awaken the blaze in Erebonia. At least, that's what I heard. Whatever that really means in the end. Seriously? So, that's their plan? Where did you hear that? Well, last night. I heard it from the Chancellor himself. He told me some other intriguing things too, but... I feel like he intentionally left out some of the more important details. I-I see. 
I already talked to him, but... It seems Ouroboros working Crossbow two years ago was to bring about some kind of change in Erebonia. Just so you know, Crossbow's Mirage Septarian was artific uh, an artificially created fake. It was stronger than the original, but the society had no interest in it. Which is interesting. It really is. It, asks, it really uh, begs the question as to what they're trying to do. If they don't think the, uh... If they don't think a stronger version would be something they'd want. Well, I'd hazard a guess. Their goal is to acquire the two treasures that originally existed here. The Septarians of Fire and Earth, that once called the Land of Erebos home. The Septarians of Fire and Earth. So the Vero had the Septarian of Space, Crossbell the Septarian of Mirage, and Erebon even had two Septarians. Hold on a second. And if the witches are the people who uh, guarded the Septarians of Fire, yes, then the Black Workshop and the Gnomes are the same people. Ah. The descendants of those who guarded the Septarian of Earth. Then our counterparts. There are counterparts. Much like the Royal Oslice family of the Burl and the Croix family in Crossbell. In addition, you may be aware that each Septarian has its own holy beast assigned to watch over it. Fair question. Yeah, fair point. The Burl had an ancient dragon. Crossbell had a divine wolf. And as it had two Septarians, Erebonia had two holy beasts as well. However, after the Great Collapse, each of them vanished alongside the Septarians they were, uh, they were to oversee. Okay. Well, that explains that. That's the core of the issue. The two Septarians, the two groups of people who worship them, and the two holy beasts. The Septarians and holy beasts uh, disappeared, and the people changed their names. What happened in Erebonia 1200 years ago? Allow me to reveal to you the truth behind the land of Erebos. The story still relies on a modicum of speculation. Please keep that in mind. Okay. Got it. In the beginning, this land housed two of the Septarian. Answers, answers, answers. Finally. The Arc Rouge, Septarian of Fire and wielder of fierce power. Arc Rouge. What was the Arc Royale? That's what the... Interesting. That's what they call... That's similar, and I'm not sure if it's a coincidence, but that's what they call the main campus's train, right? The Arc Royale. That's almost... It's spelled differently, too, but, you know. The Lost Zem, Septarian of Earth and bearer of unyielding endurance. Each assumed the form of a colossal guardian and went about granting boons and performing miracles for its people. For a few centuries, the land of Erebonia prospered. But eventually, its people began to vie for power and control. The Septarians had always granted their people's wishes. But now, their peoples each wished for the other's destruction. Interesting. Maybe that's what the curse is? The Septarians lingering? And essentially, uh... Influencing the people to constantly be at each other's throats, or the throats of other people? Maybe that's the idea. And so... The two colossi began fighting. Their battle ravaged the earth and split the sky, devastating the entire region. The humans tried to stop them, but it was in vain. The Septarians' fight continued 1,000 days, scorching the land black. When the battle ended at long last, it was a tie. Exhausting their power in one final strike, the two Septarian were blown away, left as nothing but empty shells. Yet the tale did not end there. The power expelled by each Septarian collided and became one, resulting in the creation of an entirely new entity. The Great One, the Septarian of Steel, Ooh, okay. Yeah. Fire and Earth. It was an existence created from the union of fire and earth. It was beyond anything else in this realm. It was the ultimate source of power. Though things seem fine at first, 
the survivors of the war soon realized the eternal conflict within it. The lingering need to destroy each other. They knew this conflict would cause it to grow ever more unstable, and that it was not something that could be handled by mankind. With the Holy Beast's assistance, the kins of fire and earth joined together to see the Great One sealed away. However, each of their attempts ended in failure. Left with no other options, they resorted to their final plan. The Great One would remain whole in the higher plane, yet its physical incarnation in this world split into numerous shards. It was this final gambit that saw disaster averted. Indeed, their combined efforts bore fruit. The Kin of Earth created seven vessels, while the Kin of Fire split the Great One's power and infused each vessel with a part of it. Seven dolls in the form of knights, each bearing the Great One's power, the Divine Knights. Wow, that is beyond fathomable. I was taught about this in bits and pieces, but it's all that happened 1,200 years ago. I was in a fairy tale, right? At the very least, something similar happened. So, how does the Great Tree, how does all that awaken anything in Erebonia? At the very least, something similar happened. So, what happened after that? And why did Valmar and the other Divine Knights start fighting? This is as far as the story that was passed down goes. So the Kin of Fire became the Haxon Clan, and the Kin of Earth became the Gnomes. They split the unstable ultimate power into seven, then both sides decided to watch over the reconstruction after the Great Collapse. Oh, and uh, by the way, many people from each kinship have since abandoned their roles. They joined together, started accepting people from the surrounding area, and created the foundation of what became Erebonia. This is around the same time the Sept uh, Septian Church was spreading across Erebonia. 300 years passed, and the Arner family established the city of Heimdall. That's when the disaster of the Dark Dragon occurred. Nine hundred years ago, Heimdall was a small city of only about 50,000 people. However, it was one of the burgeoning centers of culture for the region. The Septian Church had finished construction on the Heimdall Cathedral and there were plans to develop the city even further. But it was then the Dark Dragon appeared, blanketing Heimdall in miasma and transforming it into a city of the dead. Emperor Astorius chose to lead his people south and made St. Art the new capital of Erebonia. In helping Emperor Astorius deal with this crisis, the Hexen clan and gnomes each suffered substantial losses. The Hexen clan lost its elder, and the gnomes, their holy beast. And so ended their alliance. The final time they spoke would be a century later. It was when Emperor Hector awakened the Vermilion Knight to reclaim Heimdall from the Dark Dragon. He did so at the urging of the chief of the gnomes and the new elder of the Hexen clan, myself. However, the Emperor fell to the Dark Dragon's miasma, and the Vermilion Knight to its curse. So maybe that's it? If there's like a part of the Septarian that's basically cursed, the curse is now influencing everything? The Emperor's son had the Chief of the Gnomes and myself seal the Cursed Knight deep below the Imperial Palace. That would be the last act our two clans performed together. I do not know why, but the gnomes cut off contact with our clan and hid themselves away. In the 800 years that followed, whenever war struck Erebonia, a divine knight would enter the stage, demonstrate its might, then vanish. I was certain the gnomes were involved, yet all we could do was guide awakeners on the proper course. So more than just. Yeah. This unending pattern reached its most fevered peak 250 years ago during the War of the Lions. More than just Strykels, yeah? 
The false Emperor Orthros unearthed the cursed Vermilion Knight, and a mercenary under Prince Lucius' employ awakened the Palatinate Knight. Prince Dreykels found the Ashen Knight, and Leanne the Argent Knight. The four awakened at once, made for a grand war indeed. So that's how things connect. Hmm. So... Led the people south and made St. Arden the capital. Yeah. In helping Emperor Asteris deal with this crisis, the Axon clan gnomes each suffer substantial losses. Lost its elder and the gnomes their holy beast. So what happened to the Hexen clan holy beast? If that was what caused the uh, holy beast to be lost for the gnomes. Huh. There are so many parts of the story I want to question, but... Samus Grandma was around during the War of the Lions. A good witch. I've read about them in fairy tales. As the prince's guide, I accompanied them to Draco's camp. Ah, uh, I remember those days. <laughs> I used to be quite the beauty. And I mean to say... All I mean to say is that the art depictions of me are not inaccurate. <laughs> uh, um, as stated earlier, the elder... Uh, the Outer of the Witches isn't a normal human. So you've been watching over the clan after becoming an immortal being. Yes, however, I only came into existence 800 years ago. My predecessor perished soon afterwards. I do not have many memories from before that point. So naturally, there are things I still do not know. So if you're a vampire, does that mean you're Night Touch, technically? You're not Night Familia? Because that's what people were saying the vampires were. Is it two things that sort of got confused? Hmm. There are things you do know about. Such as how you said the Maiden Leanne was the Awakener of the Argent Knight. And whether or not she is almost a steel maiden. That's true. You could confirm so many things. It is her, of that much. I am certain. She is the daughter of a Count who met the Wandering Prince and later challenged the Apocalypse only to lose her life. However, before that happened, it was I who guided Leanne to become the Argent Awakener. So she died. But Leanne knew her powers were too great, so she kept them hidden away. It was only during her battle with the Apocalypse that she unleashed her full might. In the end, however, she is fatally injured and passed away after the war. So, sort of like Crow. Then half a year later, I witnessed her arrival. Along with your ancestor, Osaid, second command of the Eisenritter. Wait, what? Revival. So that's why. Were you the one who revived them, Grandmother? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know, too. After the end passed, I thought it strange how her body did not rot. So, I took her body back to the village, and half a year later, she simply woke up. I assumed she had become an immortal, though I could not say when or how. What? W what does that mean? How does one become immortal? Leanne realized what had happened to her, so she left Erebone to walk the earth without even telling her love, Dracos. She left her gram to our side, her right-hand man. I coachly... <clears throat> so... I'm guessing he witnessed it. I occasionally met with her whenever she came around. The last time was 20 years ago. That's when she met Ouroboros' Grandmaster, who brought her into the fold. Thank you for sharing this. There are some things that cannot be overlooked. Yeah, we've seen too many incredible things over the last few months. So the boss and Crow were both... As I said earlier, we have no idea what specifically happened. I think the key is the Divine Knight. The Jaeger King was not an Awakener, Awakener when he was alive. On the other hand, Dracos was an Awakener, but he did not become immortal. He's remained dead. That's right! Um, Instructorine isn't immortal, is he? Oh, tell that to my game overs. Right, he's still been growing since graduating. <laughs> is that the key? Yeah, I guess my body's not stuck in limbo at the very least. Yeah, I may have some weird powers, but I've definitely aged. Is there a common reason? 
I believe there are two people who know the truth. The current Chancellor Gileath Osborne, who also might be immortal, and the Chief of the Gnomes, Black Alberich. And that's why you're Crimson Roselia, he's Black Alberich. So that's the leader of the Black Workshop. Yes, though I do not believe he's an immortal like me. The leadership of the gnomes is somehow passed down from one to the next, in order for them to achieve their goal of bringing about the Great Twilight. The Great Twilight? This is the first I've heard of it, but... Is that the fairy tale of the end that Vita was talking about? Yes, 800 years ago, as we are going our separate ways, that is what the chief of the gnomes told the prince and me. It was as if he was foretelling a future where everything ends. Wait, that's too... It's much too similar to the direction that the Empire is heading. Let me add to this. The reason Barkhorn and I were in Erebonia was because we discovered an anomaly. The spear veins were being distorted all over the continent, and the source seemed to be uh, seemed to emanate from the Empire. It was like a ripple effect. The incidents in the Burl and Crossbell, as well as the Civil War in Erebonia, only served to further increase these distortions. Really? They continued to get larger after Crossbell and North Ambria were folded into the Empire. And larger again, when the Cryptids and Magic Knights of Erebonia appeared in Crossbell. On the other hand, Plaroma Grass, which was native to Crossbell, started blooming in the Empire. If the Great Twilight really is about to happen, then all of this seems to be an omen of things to come. Who is this Albert person? He uses the Masked Man as an agent, and hired the Jaeger King, who was supposed to be dead. Are there other gnomes out there? Hmm? Well, your dear rabbit friend may technically count, but... Besides the masked man, their leader seems to have at least one other acting agent. I cannot say who this person may be, but it would seem they are talented, a talented craftsman at any rate. George? Oh, and before you jump to conclusions, I'm not speaking of that little brat Schmidt. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that's funny. It seems the person I speak of possesses a different kind of genius than he does. George. Talented craftsman. That sounds... Well, that's putting some unpleasant ideas in my head. In any event, Albert and the Chancellor are probably connected. And it's unlikely to be through the intelligence of Vision or his children. With the incidents of last night, things may have already been put in motion. Oh. Why do you say that? Last night, we finally had to go to the black records that you found the other day. Oh, and the black records are a collection of particular type of artifacts sometimes found in Erebonia. I was actually exchanging information about them with Reen. You know, black records, black workshop. Just gonna note. Really? When when did that happen? Right before all of you graduated. He revealed his true identity to me. He told me not to tell anyone. I hope you don't hold it against me. Instructor... I mean, Father Thomas. Sheesh. Probably took advantage of Reen's sense of responsibility, didn't you? <laughs> well, I can't deny it. In any event, this is what the updated Black Records said. When the sacrifice is made and the ancient blood flows, the path to the Grawl of Erebos shall open. When the tainted holy beast is pierced by the blade of World's End and its blood fills the Grawl, the great twilight shall fall upon the land. Tainted holy beast. You think the... Dark dragon was supposed to be that? Hmm. What? That... The timing is way too perfect. It's as if the prophecies were written about our current situation. If the ancient blood is referring to the emperor, then the sacrifice is referring to Ash? What about the Grawl and the Blade? The Grawl is probably related to the in Church. And the Tainted Holy Beast. Father Thomas, could that be? Yes, as it was stated earlier, guys. There is a sacred place beneath this cathedral. The Primal Ground. A facility that was designed to play a major role after the Great Collapse. 900 years ago, when Heimdall was shrouded in darkness, it retreated beneath... Uh... It retreated beneath here and disappeared. Disappeared? 
I heard about such a facility in the Burl. Yes, there's one beneath the Grant, uh, Grant Cell Cathedral in the Burl, too. However, when Heimdall was retaken, the space beneath the Cathedral was buried by rock. But what if it didn't disappear and simply transferred somewhere else instead? Ah, so it still exists. The Holy Beast mentioned in the prophecy is likely the Holy Beast of Earth. As I said before, it disappeared after the disaster 900 years ago. It is only speculation, but I believe the dark dragon you faced the other day was merely a servant of the true Holy Beast. Ooh, a servant? What you, okay. Wait a minute. Are you saying that dark dragon wasn't the cause of everything? That was indeed a powerful cryptid. It was not something that the witches and gnomes could not take together. Uh, take care of together. And the Holy Beast gave birth to the Dark Dragon and is still alive somewhere. Where else could it be but the Primal Grounds? All the conditions set forth in the prophecy are lining up. This has got to be a joke. Regarding this blade of World's End that defeats the Holy Beast. In other scriptures, it is called Originator Zero. I am speculating that it is a special weapon created by the Black Workshop. What in the world? At the very least, it probably isn't anything like what the boss uses. Do you think it's made of Zemurian ore, like the weapons used by uh, the Divine Knights? I would say most likely. <gasps> Muse? Is something the matter? <sighs> oh? You realize something? Right now, we need any straw we can grasp at. Anything at all could help, no matter how small. Yes, you're right. That term, Originator Zero, could that be OZ, perhaps? <sighs> Wait, is that something I should recognize? That's what the Black Workshop called Milliam and Altina. Oh! Oh. Thinking back to what happened with Altina. Shit, 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 shit. They're model numbers. OZ. What are you talking about? So you finally made it. That voice. Vita! Ah, so the prodigal granddaughter returns. Ah, hey, buddy. Misty, uh, Vita. I heard you had been acting on your own. Yeah, I don't think you can do it on your own anymore. You're working with Thomas now, right? <laughs> nice to see you again, Grandmother, Emma, Celine, and Class 7, too. And thank you for mediating, Mr. Lysander. Oh, don't even mention it. It always breaks my heart to see a family torn apart, so... Vita! Why? You really don't plan on ever coming back, do you? That's correct. As I said before, my allegiance will forever lie with the Grandmaster. I can't return to you and Grandmother. I can never go back to the way I used to be. Why? Just like the Steel Maiden. Uh, seriously, who even is this Grandmaster person? I have no clue. But it is clear she is quite taken with them. So do tell, Vita. If you have not decided to return to us, why show yourself now? Has Ouroboros finally decided upon its course of action? Yes. After our experiments with the three Ions. Oh, are you working with them again? The six other Anguists came to a unanimous decision. They decided to ignore my warning. They will work with the Chancellor and the Gnomes to bring about the Great Twilight, completing the Phantasmal Blaze Plan. <gasps> Th that's... So that's how it is. The reason Ouroboros was so quiet the past month wasn't because they left Erebonia. It was to carry out their plan. And determine whether they should work alongside enemies and traitors. How can that be? I if that were the case, it means... They're all our enemies? Yeah, that's a lot of stuff working against us. Is this... It's not the Cathedral's bell. Huh? I think I recognize it from Crossbell. You do? Yeah, I'm sure of it. I remember hearing it right before the incidents in Crossbell, when we were still independent. Oh, 
The one from the museum! The bell from Stargazer's Tower? But the sound's coming from a different direction than the museum. <laughs> the Phantasmal Blaze Plan. I wonder how much of this she foresaw. Well, that's my bad. <laughs> the Phantasmal Blaze Plan. What a fitting name. That is quite enough mumbling to yourself. If you know what is going on, show us! Also, she, that's probably referring to the Grandmaster, right? Supposed to have a female voice anyways, right? It'll be a bit tough without Grianos. I'll need your help, Grandmother. Emma, Celine, you too. But you're still working with Ouroboros, so what's your end goal here? Yes! Ugh, I'm not your slave! Of course it's there. It's always there, isn't it? Actually, isn't that where we found the Black Record 7? Okay. You guys have really gotten into a pattern of moving that thing, haven't you? Man, Ouroboros has become a lot less of a threat. Like, first in Crossbell, they're like, Well, let's work with them. We're just sort of like supporting them. And here it's like, well, we lost, so let's go along with their plan. So it sort of gets us what we want. Maybe. Also, wait, what's that? Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, I didn't put her in that wetsuit at the very least. <sighs> Is that the black... whatever his name was? It looked like Lumen. Different hair color, though. <sighs> now then... Let's say we celebrate the continuation of the Phantasmal Blaze plan by ringing in the Great Twilight. I, Enforcer Number Zero, the Fool, shall play the opening note. So this is what happened just slightly before, presumably? Oh boy, does this look familiar. Is this the primal ground? I actually thought it was the... Actually... Was that the Vermilion Apocalypse's remains that they left in the main area there? It might be. What? Check that out! Huh. Sure is something. 
Well, how about that? So, the beginning of the end, is it? <laughs> Deja vu. <sighs> yeah, look, she's there. The Grawl of Erebus. Just as the Black Records foretold. The crypt where the great power will be reborn. And he knows, of course he does. <sighs> Reen. Eusis. Couldn't have guessed this is how my day would turn out when I woke up this morning. Let us begin. It is time. Chief of the gnomes and head of the workshop, show me the way, Black Alberic. Alberic of Black Demise. Yeah, that looks like him. As you wish, my lord. Yeah. His hair color changed, though. Is that like, um... His eyes changed to red, too. Is that like Reen's transformation, maybe? Maybe he was just hiding his hair color? Stood out too much, maybe? I don't know. They're all on the same side now, eh? They're just waiting for us, I presume? Because that's a lot of them. Could I just take Valimar and jump to, like, to the top of it or something? <sighs> try, try splitting it open or something? I don't know. Rufus. Milium. Was that... Ale yes. But why? Boss, Zeno, and Leo. Azure Siegfried. Uh, and that guy in the lab coat. Isn't that... Blazing Demon and the Fool were there as well. So that's the Maiden. Why? We just spoke this morning and... 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 What's going on?! Way. Lisa. That man's name was Lumen or something like that, right? His hair looked different. <laughs> Franz Lumen. Huh. Had Elisa never met her? Or him? The first disciple of G. Schmidt and the deceased husband of the Reinford Group's chairman. What? Also known as Franz Reinford. Ah, so he has been lurking in the shadows these past 20 years. Yes, perhaps for the sake of working with the Chancellor to engineer this very moment. What? <gasps> Elisa, snap out of it. Now's not the time. That's not the direction I thought this would be taking. As a bracer, I can't just sit here and let them pull off whatever that Twilight crap is they're planning. How about all of you? She's right. We can't stop here. We gathered together to do whatever we could to help. Our goal remains unchanged. Yep, true. Elisa, let's go. Yeah. Well, Vita. What will you do now? Well, I'd like to charge in there alongside the rest of you, mostly out of spite. 
Yay. Unfortunately, I suspect things won't be quite that easy. What are you... Something's... There's a turbulent swirl in the mana. Are they gonna send shit after us? They probably know we're gonna try something. Was that? I believe so. Okay. Sir Lysander, Sir Gaius, cryptids and magic knights have appeared all over the city. Oh, 